So during the Depression, interestingly enough, the, the enrollment at Purdue increased. You would think it might decrease during the Depression. It didn't. It, it, it gradually dropped a little bit, and then it started increasing. Elliott thought students were coming to Purdue because they couldn't get jobs, so they just thought they'd go get an education. Uh, by the, by uh, 1940, 1941, Purdue had almost 7,000 students, and that was the biggest it had ever been. Well, a war started in, de in December of uh, 1941, and that Hall of Music, which had just 19, 18, 19 months earlier, hosted such a big celebration, started hosting meetings where they talked to the students about what was going to be expected of them and what was going to happen to them. Uh, a much, much different occasion. The university changed, of course. Uh, they, they urged the students to stay in school until they were drafted uh, so they could get as much education as possible. They said the military needs you, but the military needs your education. Uh, try and finish your degrees if possible. Gradually, the military started stationing soldiers on the Purdue campus. They, they, the students who were here studying joined the military and, and were in the military as they finished their studies. The, the military stationed other students here to, to get education. Our airport was used by the military. The, the university looked like a military post, and it was. That's basically what it was. Uh, and even women came in here, I should say even women came in here uh, and, and uh, learned skills that they were going to need in factories around the country to build airplanes and to build other things. And they did very well. They were very successful. Uh, as the war was going to come to an end and people began to realize that this was going to happen, it was going to be successful, our government came up with the, the GI Bill of Rights. Uh, it was one of the most amazing pieces of legislation in the history of the, of the world affecting education. I believe that the Land Grant Act and the, the GI Bill were the two greatest pieces of education legislation of all time. Among the many things the GI did, Bill did is it gave people who had been in the military just relatively short period of time money to go to college. When they were, brought all these men home, some 15 million people coming home pretty much all at once, there weren't any jobs for them. We had to convert our industries back from making tanks to back to make, making refrigerators and cars. This was going to take time. There would be a, a time when there would be great unemployment. So they decided to make it possible for these students to go to college, and they did. And this is when education in the United States changed because many of those people, very, very few people before the war attended college, but they, they came in huge numbers to universities after the war on the GI Bill. And, and Purdue, which was 7,000 before the war, had dropped down to about 3,500 during the war. By 1947, there were over 14,000 students on this campus. Uh, the, the rules were you had to have a place to stay. Uh, and so the, the men would sometimes take their cars and park them in front of a house and say, I'm staying at that, that address, and they'd sleep in their cars until they could find a place. They slept in the attics of buildings. Uh, they slept in vacant factories in Lafayette. Uh, they showered in the armory. Uh, the, the classrooms were overflowing. They found everybody they could find who could teach a course. Uh, people in town sent children to their grandparents out in the country and rented out the rooms so they could make a little money uh, from, the, from the Purdue students. This town was mobbed with people. Uh, no one ever complained. They all were very happy. They were getting an education, and they were very much uh, often the first person in their family who had ever been to college. The war had, of course, produced, it, war does horrible things, but it also produces amazing technology. And there were many technologies that emerged from the war and were just being developed by the end of the war. People who were in the military had been working on them. They came to Purdue and to other land-grant universities, and they learned more about those technologies. They learned more about engineering. They learned more about agriculture, science, whatever. And they went off and graduated. From this very crowded university, they went off into the world. In, in the beginning of the 21st century, Neil Armstrong, one of our graduates, held a, they, they held a dinner and they asked him to announce what they, the, the engineers of the nation thought were the, the greatest engineering feats of the 20th century. And you can imagine, they, they, the 20th century was the greatest period of technological development in our history. Most of that came in the second part of the 20th century after World War II. And who did that? It was that greatest generation, 
a generation of people who grew up during the war, who when they came of age, went to war, saved the world, and then came crowded into universities, living, you know, five, six, seven people to a room, learned what they had to learn, went out, determined to do something, and they did. They changed the world, and they created this world that we enjoy today. Thank you.